Morning guys, Mark Frasch, ProTech Dog Training. Ice on the pipes today and all the buckets are frozen over and uh, poop that was left in the kennel last night to go scoop it up in the morning. It's hard as a rock. You ever seen a, a, a lollipop poop? <laughs> First time I've ever experienced that in my career coming up here to this cold, cold region. I've never had to scoop poop that won't get off the cement because it's frozen overnight. <laughs> frozen lollipop poop. <laughs> All right, so I am going to do a special. This is going to be a little long-winded, and it's to one of my longtime uh, followers on my list. They've been following the e-collar uh, series that I've got going on, and they see a little bit of pressure on the dog, and the dog um, showing handler sensitivity and, and showing some effects to the pressure that I'm putting on the dog and how I'm working the animal. So they did a long-winded post. And I've been doing service oriented jobs my whole life. You know, I work in gas stations and uh, all kinds of, as a guard for many years for a pharmaceutical company and you know, over 1,500 people working there and handing out keys and having to open doors for them. And I'm used to the to civilian. I'm used to the uh, tourism. You know, I'm used to that. I grew up in a tourist town. I'm used to a tourist type of thing. So people is something that I, I am pretty good at. Uh, and that being the case, Anytime you had a negativity coming at you with a customer that's got a customer complaint, they're coming at you with uh, some kind of angst, right? You always, I always learned over the years that you have to step back and you have to look at it as an opportunity, an opportunity to be able to um, make them happy, be able to answer their questions and, and, and uh, give them an answer to their concern, right? So we were always taught that it's an opportunity. So in this case, it's, it's the same thing that I'm saying to this user. Uh, ton is a, her or him, I'm not sure. They've, they've got a real abstract uh, uh, placebo handle, so it's not really a, a name that you would think of as no, a normal. Um, but they express their angst in seeing uh, me doing what I'm doing with um, Toffee in regards to what they see in the pressure and, and some of the techniques that I'm using, okay? So I wanted to address that and wanted to take it as an opportunity to be able to go on a vein. Keep in mind, everybody has their perspectives. They have their points of view based on experience, lack of experience, um, and then what you're seeing in this little square window, okay? That's why the police hate the, the cameras, you know? You can't blame them because people are making backseat driving judgments. They want to be a backseat driver and they have no clue um, what it takes to really be a professional and to do that again and again and again and dealing with people that don't want to be taken in and, and, and arrested and that have fear, that have adrenaline, that react with a very animalistic human nature of fighting and all this stuff that they do in law enforcement that they have to deal with the psychology and we're an animal just like any other animal guys no matter whether you realize it or not and the, the the cops have a very hard job and then overall our society is the the younger people getting on it transitions through all this they have no respect for authority anymore so you know you can't view it and then then you've got this little window that only shows a, a minute of a video that gives an, a video, a one little look, and then there's depth perception, there's angle, there's all kinds of things that are denoted because of this little screen, right? So the first thing that this person was making a comment was that they saw the handler sensitivity, the dog showing uh, a fear type of tendencies. Well, first off, that comes from the owner that had the dog until it was about 15, 16 months of age, putting pressure on it and not knowing what they were doing, that handler sensitivity was already there. So this is kind of a ripple effect. It's kind of like a mirror. It's, it's echoing because of what this dog has already shown when they have pressure put on them, right? And <clears throat> so that is just a, a fact. And, and when you're a professional, you have to understand how to get a dog through pressure. You're gonna see this. You're gonna see a dog showing every dog is different. And, and you, every moment is different in time that you're going out. They made a comment about one of my comments in my uh, video that I talked about how Toffee didn't do too well when I went to the park and I had to turn the, the uh, stem up a little high, higher and, and there was a bite to it. Well, I was there to give the, the customer a lesson and I'm already working the dog in the collar at home and I'm doing it in the neutral lab. And so it's a good pl place to test. Is the dog learning or not? And the environment overshadowed it, but you have to have an answer. You can't let the dog, he has to have a consequence. You got to bring it up. And then I backed off and I'm not going to go back there for a while because I'll make sure that that pattern of routine is established a lot better because now I saw it, right? 
I mean, this is what training is all about, right? So in that context, and then they made a comment about seeing me step on the feet. Again, your depth profession, angles, all that. I'm not putting that much pressure. I'm not stepping on the feet and making the dog yelp. I'm not going crunch, okay? I'm not, you know, it's not what's happening. I'm, I'm slightly brushing it with my feet, okay? And there's a discomfort. I can feel it. I know what I'm doing, and I know the effect it has on the dog. I've done this a thousand times, okay? Am I going to see some kind of woe? Yeah, you're going to see a woe, because if somebody tries to do that with me, I'm going to go, wait a minute, you know? I mean, that's natural. It's a very natural thing. So in regards to pressure, that's what you see, and that's what this tool is all about. A, a stem collar is pressure. That's why you'll hear comments like pressure on and pressure off. Um, it is an art. It is something that you have to be pretty good at. But it's back to that yin and yang. It's about balance. I'll bring it back into balance. If I was to go do all this work and not show it to the world at all and only show you the end results, you would see a dog that was animated, that was happy, and that you would never see that I did these little small, minute, discomfort type of corrections to the dog, okay? They're not major. I'm not being, I mean, even when I go into the dog with a heavy, heavy hand and I go and I start hitting him with my knees and I'm bunching him, all I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm bumping him back, right? And there's, there's a mild discomfort. Yes, there is, okay? Now, in my perspective, in my world, okay? Told you this is gonna be long-winded, all right? My perspective has been around working dogs my whole life. Roddies, Shepherds, Dobies. I don't think there's German Shepherds. There's not a dog that I haven't worked and that I haven't done some harsh things to that I've had to. Have you ever had a dog that's reactive, that's a human aggression in a Rottweiler? That Rottweiler would tear you up if you don't know what you're doing and you don't put him up in the air and hang him off his feet. Okay, you got to take the wind out of them. You got to take the, and that is old standard. And that's what you got to do to some of these very aggressive dogs. Okay, you're going to get eaten up. The dog will end up biting you and you, and if he wins, he learns from that winning. And then it's only going to make the, the behavior get worse, not better, right? Your job is to nip at the butt and make him never want to have to do that again. You're talking human aggression with a dog like that. <coughs> He'll hurt somebody very severely. Okay. I used to have a customer with a Rottweiler that was in Compton, African-American dude that had a, a string of restaurants, really nice guy, but he didn't take his dog out enough and he didn't really, he was so busy running his business that I gave, did a good job with the training and everything, but environment always takes hold and, and a relationship between owner and dog are a part of that. You're talking Compton, so you know, you got kids going by the fence, messing with a dog, you know, there's some, some things that, that brought that dog's aggression way up. He was mean. He was mean as all get out. So one time, I was the only one, the guy that could handle this dog because I trained him and had a relationship with him. So when he would leave on vacation or go somewhere, he would always ask me to take the dog because nobody else could handle this dog. He was mean. And I had a person over. I had him on a heel. I had him on a sit at my side. And it was a girl. And she came in the house. And I was about five feet away five and a half feet, whatever it was. I had a six foot leash on the dog. I remember this very well. And the girl looked at the dog's eyes. And the dog looked at the eyes and that's a confrontation to a, a dog. And it was a mean Roddy. He was no play around. He was a huge old boy. The next thing I know before I could even realize it was going to happen, I didn't even see it happening. The dog lunged and lunged for her face. And if he would have bit her, he would have tore off her face. I mean, it was real aggressive. And just because of my, my my ability to do what I do and knowing what I'm doing, I'm ready and I'm cocked. Right as that dog got to that person's face, that close, he was right there and I came with a good jerk release and went the other direction, okay? And caught the dog and, and the, there was no harm, no foul in that regards. But I had to hang the dog up. That dog, if it learns from these behaviors, you're not going to solve it any other way than a consequence, period. Okay? There's consequences in life, people. If you don't realize this and you don't understand this, you're hurt. You want to go to the purely positive and you want to do that and you think that you're never going to be able to handle a dog like I can handle. And what you're going to end up doing is you're going to tell these people they need to put the dog down and you're not going to fix the problem. And then that ends up having the dog put down. There was no fault to that dog other than that dog's environment and the owner not getting off the couch to work the dog, right? And doing the right things and having that proper relationship with a stout dog. You know, these dogs have been bred genetically to, to show aggression, right? That's what they've been bred for.
okay, Rottweilers, Dobermans, I mean, they all came from a very stout environment. We, as Americans, have watered them down. You can't even find a good Doby anymore, right? So, genetically, what is genetics in a, in a big way are all about breeding a dog for a purpose. In the old days, we bred a dog for a purpose and we were a lot stronger on the dogs. If you go over to Europe right now and get into some of the KNPV stuff, you're going to be told a lot of times that it comes back through people talking to each other. They're pretty harsh with their training methods. And there's people that look at it and say that's not a good thing. But in reality, overall, and I'm not condoning it, I'm just saying an overall perspective is to look at the, the genetic stamp that that creates over time. It creates a stout dog that's able to take corrections and able to take this and work towards what he's been genetically developed to do which is that since 9-11, I'm gonna tell you, they've done some breeding that's got some really tough dogs. Errol, same thing, Errol was a dangerous dog. He'd tear you up, and the strength that he came at you when he did was more, I've never had a dog come at me as strong as that dog did. So genetically, these dogs are being bred for a purpose, and they're not a couch potato. Americans have this whole tendency with this AKC crap, as far as I'm concerned, because I work working dogs, right? There's a lot of value in it. At least you're getting people out there to have relationships with their dogs and working their dogs and all that, but they don't live in my world, right? And I'm not trying to say and condone that um, overcorrecting a dog and, and doing some of the things that you hear some of these people doing is, is correct, but at the same time, you can't, it's not all feathers and lace, guys. It's just not. Okay. Now, Toffee, in that regards, the stuff that I'm doing with him, stepping on his toes and driving him back with my knees and all that, that is light discomfort type of corrections. I'm not putting any, and I know it because I feel the correction I'm putting on him. But when you're looking at it, this little screen and you not having knowledge and being a layman that has no concept of the, the stoutness that I work in dogs, have no idea how to get a dog through that pressure. Right? I understand how to get a dog through that pressure to get him back to the other side, and I will balance it. Okay? And he learns a lot faster. What's better? If I could take that, this person said, why couldn't you just take their paws and put it in the box and do that 50 times with food until the dog figured it out? Okay? Again, I'll go back to reality. It's not sugar and lace. I've got a customer that's paying me to do a job. I want to do it as efficiently as possible and do it in the most humane way as possible with as little stress on the animal. And I found that these little methods, like even they were making a comment about me taking the, the, the jaw and, and give, I'm giving little, little pinches as I draw up on the dog. It's a diff, discomfort type of a correction. I'm doing it underneath the chin because I'm drawing the dog's head up to look at me and there is a little bit of a, a startle, right? That's what you see. The dog's going, wait a minute, okay? So these little discomfort type of corrections work very well, but you have to understand what you're doing and you have to understand how to balance things. I see the stress that's caused, guys. I'm very aware of it. I'm not that naive that I don't see it. If I don't see it, then I would be not as professional as I am, okay? So I'm not... I understand your human reaction and your human point of view, and I, and I totally understand it. But you're talking to a person that's been doing this since I was 12 years old, and I understand. And I'm showing you guys things that... 99% of these trainers don't show you diddly squat because they're worried about your reaction. They're worried about somebody like you that comes at me and makes and makes it seem like, oh, you're such a bad person. And the next thing you know, I've got a whole group of you all blasting me like a son of a gun because you see something that's a little more stressful on the animal than you're used to seeing, okay? I work with working dogs, folks, and it's something that I'm good at. And that the, the, the corrections that you see me doing with the, with the, the little feet tapping on the, on the, on the box and, and then kind of pinching his jowls as I'm moving up towards my face, you're going to see a reaction out of the animal. I'll get the dog through it. It just blows my mind that human nature being what it is, if you guys had your way and you had your dogs all the time and you wanted them to be milk sops and take no corrections and God forbid we use any type of harshness, you would have... Milk sops. You wouldn't have any dog that would be able to go out and take a man and take him down. Because I guarantee you, the man ain't playing. When you send a dog on a man, he's got fear. He's got adrenaline. He's got not wanting to go to jail. And he's got drugs in him. Okay? When you have that kind of fight, there's a fight for life and death. If that officer is on the street 
And that officer's in a fight for his life. He damn well does not want a dog that shows any weakness. He wants a dog that's going to be able to bring up his fight to match that adrenaline level, that drug addict, that whatever it may be. It gets hot and heavy out there, folks, and you guys don't have a clue. And then all of a sudden you want to be a backseat driver and you want to jump into the back seat and, and dictate what you think is right or wrong when you see it. Now, I'm, I'm on a little small screen, okay? There's exceptions to the rule. I mean, that, that last... I can't even think of the name of the case where the gentleman was put on the ground with the, the cop with his knee on his throat and all that. That was totally wrong. You're talking a half hour, 40 minutes, whatever there was going on, and this guy wasn't doing what he needed to to relieve the pressure on this guy's neck, and the guy died. I mean, there's a certain point that you've got to understand it. So I don't disregard the public's um, want to say things and to get involved in things when they see these little these little videos. Because uh, there's a certain perspective that it, it makes up, it makes the law enforcement officer have to step back and and change the way they do their their job overall, and that may be a good thing in the long run. Okay, um, so, but I'm just trying to make you understand that I've been doing this since I was 12 years old. I'm pretty good at what I what I do, and, and there's everything I see that you see. Okay, but you only see it from this. There's depth perception. There's angle. There's you have no idea what the pressure amount that I'm putting on that dog's toe when I'm I'm stepping on it. I'm glancing it. Okay, it's it's like a minor irritation. It'd be like if I went and took my fingers and gave you a finger knock on the top of your hand. Okay, it hurt, but it's not so much that it's not so severe that it's not going to make you. You know what I mean? Or like when I talk about Johnny on the couch and Johnny's not listening, and you go, Johnny, I need you to take out the trash. You say it four times, you finally get frustrated. You come over and you pop him upside the head. Hey, that's life. Okay, it, 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 some of it, if you go past that and you get it to a point where you're being abusive, then sure. But there, there's a certain amount that we have to learn from all animals on God's green earth learn from consequences. Okay, and it, you, you're you better off doing it that way and getting it done and over with than sitting there going 50 times and I got to put his foot in a box and, and sit there and give, could you get there with the 50 times? Maybe, but it wouldn't be as well served as what I'm trying to teach this dog. Because remember, he's going to go to be in working and protection. He's going to have to understand how to take stressors of a bad guy, okay? And that stress is something I need to build character in that animal, right? To put some hair on his chest, okay? And it's not that I'm being that aggressive with this, okay? You're, you're judging it from a point of being lame. And you even came back with an answer that denotes that you, you barely have any experience at all. You've worked a couple pet quality dogs, okay? And I'm not putting you down for that. Okay, I'm just saying that your perspective is not as, uh, it's, it's more skewed, skewed than it needs to be, okay? Because reality and truth, I have thousands and thousands of dogs, literally, okay, that I've worked and I've got, you remember that dog that I had come in that was a real weak dog because the people were coddling the dog too much? And I made a, a point of, of accenting these videos talking about foo-fooing a dog's not good for a dog and, and it makes them a neurotic mess. Okay, there's a certain amount of how you treat a dog that's going to make him come out with some stoutness. Okay, I grab the jowls and I go, good boy, and I pat him hard. I call that rough love. Okay, and I do that when the puppy's young. They get used to it. They get used to that to where that doesn't affect them. Okay, there was a video a while back where a dog was weak. He's a police dog, and they started talking about it. One of these trainers that um, service 